Good evening. A post which I published in the community section of my channel recently stirred an interesting discussion and that's why I decided to continue this discussion in the form of video. And these are the comments which I decided to answer. If you want to ask anything additional, you can submit it uh, using the new and improved way to submit questions which you can find on the contact page of megalits.org. If you wish, you can pause this video here and actually read the post which stirred the discussion so that uh, you know what we are talking about. Now, this point about uh, enjoying life is the most important and people who have this attitude, usually they would never even watch the video on coffee. Assuming that I'm gonna preach to them to give up something they enjoy in the name of some imaginary speculative idea, which is not at all the case. The point I want to make is that uh, many people who drink coffee regularly, not all of them, actually get much more suffering than enjoyment from the coffee drinking and they are not aware of it. They are only aware of the short-term enjoyment and they attribute the long-term suffering, which can be far, far greater, to other reasons due to the fraudulent media propaganda. And uh, are you getting more suffering or enjoyment is something that you can practically check by staying away from caffeine for, let's say, one or two months and see the difference for yourself. Because some people will perceive clear damage even from four coffees per month, while others can even drink one coffee every day and still feel no difference when they quit. Mar says, but aren't we here to enjoy the best things in life in moderation? Most definitely, however, the media has lied to us what moderation is in the case of all caffeine products. And Northeast is begging me to allow him to enjoy something. Northeast, I think we should enjoy just every second of our life. Not just something. All I beg you is to, if you're a regular caffeine user, to stay away from it for one or two months, see what is the result and then decide for yourself. Is your deal with caffeine really enjoying or is it mostly suffering and 10% enjoyment? Most people have their answer ready based on the media information instead of personal experience of how does it feel to live without caffeine. And when you base your opinions on the mass media or just on what people repeat again based, based on the mass media, you may not go the right way. This is an excellent point. Many people use caffeine and alcohol to just uh, further cast even more dense fog on their psyche so that they don't see their problems anymore. Actually, even when you're on caffeine or alcohol, you will still have the megalomania deep in your heart, but you will just not perceive it. From the point of view of uh, the people who use this approach, they say, well, as long as uh, I don't see it, it doesn't hurt me, maybe it is there, I don't care. However, from a broader perspective, living in a dense fog will in its turn entangle you in many other problems which could end up being even worse than megalomania, that's in long term. And in general, the more fog one allows in one personality, the proportionate will be the suffering he experiences in long term, definitely in long term. 
the way towards long-term lasting happiness is only clear and stable consciousness in long term. So if you want to achieve permanent happiness results, the first steps will be to abandon the caffeine addiction and with the sober head figure out the roots of your megalomania and work on them. When I was around 20, I fell a victim to the insane advertising uh, campaign suggesting that uh, yerba mate is a super booper for everybody. Just in a couple of weeks of drinking uh, one or two cups per day, I started trembling as if I was 250 years old. I had uh, no idea that it is related to the yerba mate. I thought I'm getting the Parkinson disease. I was very, very sad. I got even depressed for a few days. And luckily, by chance, after these uh, few terrible days, I noticed some connection between the so-called healthy tea and my trembling. And I just stopped drinking it. And luckily, in a few weeks, I stopped trembling. In a few weeks after staying clear from that. Now, more than 99% of the people will not have these dramatic effects as me because I'm a super sensitive person. However, millions do have uh, long-term problems because of caffeine and they do not make the connection. And that's why I beg you, stay free from caffeine for a couple of months and see the difference for yourself. As far as uh, the antioxidants meet that has less truth than the fairy tales, much less. If you want a scientific explanation why, type in in the search engine the antioxidants myth. But my personal claim has uh, nothing to do with uh, what we'll read, but is based on direct perception with the help of uh, sacred visionary plants of how things function in our body. Although the antioxidants may exist as such, the way they behave is not the way the media is trying to convince you. It is very rare that somebody will have their health benefited from antioxidants, and even if that is so, most likely the reason will be a placebo effect or the effects of the herbs which uh, the person might have taken because of the ant antioxidants, but they have uh, helped him in a completely different way, which has nothing to do with the propaganda about the effect of the antioxidants. And by the way, yerba mate is not in any way worse than any other caffeine product. <laughs> I'm just uh, so negative about it because of my terrible experience. And that happened to me over 20 years ago. So in the years that which followed after that, I drink, uh, let's say, 10 or maximum 15 coffees or teas per year. And even though this is a really small quantity, two or three times I had uh, terrible reactions. I started trembling for a couple of days, or I drank a coffee and could not sleep for a week or two after that. These symptoms from the herba mate damaged came back to me, even from a single cup. Unfortunately, this is uh, absolutely not true, absolutely underlined, because the caffeine in the green, black or and white and any tea is the same caffeine that uh, you find in the coffee and everywhere else. And uh, the caffeine addiction has uh, shown its ugly face millions of times already. It is not innocent, it is not pretty. For example, in India, Tea addiction is uh, very common. Over there they make very strong and very tasty tea. They boil the leaves directly in milk, put like loads of sugar, a few truckloads per cup, 
and it's actually quite tasty so people get addicted very fast and it's it's very common people drink 20 30 40 cups per day i live there and i'm really telling you what i observed uh, the tea addicts it's just something that everybody knows practically in india they suffer from uh, numerous health problems it is not that it will give you a particular type of disease the damages will vary very much from person to person and their body but uh, they are always ugly that's uh, that i can tell you for sure and uh, people know in india that uh, tea is a bad thing because they have seen its uh, dark side and uh, this is an example of very recent tradition. The tea was uh, introduced, this type of addictive tea drinking was introduced by the British, so it's a, a relatively new tradition and it illustrates very well that sometimes even uh, traditions can be not beneficial. This is actually a very good question. Why do I advocate ayahuasca when it is uh, much harsher than the caffeine effects? Also, a couple of people have asked in the past why you are against alcohol while ayahuasca is much stronger. Ayahuasca can sometimes have harsh effects, let's say 5 or 10% chance to have a harsh experience, definitely not always. But no matter how often it is harsh, the main point is that it is harsh on the illusions of the person who drinks it and the sicknesses he has rather than the psyche and the body itself. Also, the long-term effects of ayahuasca and addictive drugs like alcohol or caffeine or sugar, things like that, they're completely different. Addictive uh, substances always have uh, some sort of ill effect on the health and in many cases they also lead to degradation of the personality. While ayahuasca in long term leads to improved uh, physical health, it is not addictive and in many cases cures addictions. And what I find most important is uh, that it dissipates mental fog. Also soon I'm gonna make a couple of videos on ayahuasca in which uh, I'm gonna make the case that it is practically free of side effects and to talk about side effects uh, in ayahuasca is uh, kind of uh, inappropriate which may now seem like a somewhat exaggerated statement but I hope that uh, you will hear why exactly I want to make this case and then make up your mind. Now, the person who wrote this comment says that I claim that several cups of green tea a month dirties his soul. Actually, I don't. And if you see, if you read my post and watch my video, you will understand that I'm uh, not claiming anything like that. Several cups of tea per month will destabilize, maybe, my personal health. And yes, they may cause some mental fog for me personally. I don't think it will dirty my soul because the way I perceive it, uh, my soul always remains pure and the mental fog has only power on the psyche but always when i give such uh, extreme examples i never fail to mention that uh, they are very rare and most certainly do not apply for most people by far i really do not appreciate uh, this way 
of uh, trying to mislead people about my own statements and trying to do it in the comments below my work and that is why that is the main reason why all comments are disabled even in the community section if anybody writes a comment it simply disappears in a black hole they disappear these ones uh, they reached me by exception but otherwise it's uh, impossible to monitor everything because it will take more than 24 hours seven days per week of my time and unfortunately ali i have to really disappoint you the comments are blocked also in the community section and below all my recent videos and I sincerely apologize to the people who do have uh, quality stuff uh, to share and cannot uh, do that uh, below my videos. That is sad, but I cannot do anything uh, about it because if I open the comments section, it is full of people who seriously mislead others about what is the content of the video about the comments. And sadly, those who read the comments uh, believe such misleading leading statements instead of watching the video carefully plus other problems for example it is even more common that uh, people comment without watching the video or just assuming what they think i'm gonna say based on other videos with similar title and at the end of the day when the comments were opened uh, below my videos most of the comments not all were not really related to my words in the video below which they are published. So, since they are not really relevant to my content, I don't see a point uh, giving them a chance to be below my content. So, this image got cut a little bit, I don't know why. Anyway, Sherry makes the point that in Japan they drink 13 cups a day and they are quite fine, very healthy and they live long. Yeah, that's what the mainstream media headlines convince you about, but is it really true? I'm not sure because if you look at the official statistics, official, Japan is not uh, really even a country where people currently drink large quantities of tea. So it doesn't even match with the other lies the mainstream media is telling us. But actually, I've been really a lot around the world and I lived in different countries. And all I can tell you from personal first-hand experience is that uh, these statistics are most likely made up completely like fraud. I'm only showing them here to show you that their stories don't matter with each other which is the first symptom that something is fishy now do Japanese people live longer than other nations I believe this is true however to attribute it uh, to the chemicals found in caffeine is extremely arbitrary highly highly speculative and there are so many factors that in different that are different in the traditional japanese society than with the modern western society that to choose one out of the many possible factors and to say that this is surely the reason is uh, absolutely groundless and uh, you can find lots of articles uh, showing that all these types of uh, studies is just uh, cherry picking and they are not based on any sound logic are the japanese uh, people uh, healthier than the west definitely not so based on a first-hand experience of very close uh, friend of mine who is actually married to a japanese lady and has been telling me how is uh, life in japan uh, they are very very sickly people and uh, the way they understand it themselves is uh, as it is expressed in this uh, article because of uh, their obsession with uh, cleanliness that's why you see them all the time with uh, masks and they suffer from a lot from uh, what we would categorize as uh, allergies but actually when you read about it you will understand that the problem is uh, much deeper 
I don't think it has uh, anything to do with tea though, just uh, telling you that uh, Japanese people in general are not healthier than the people in the West. Not at all. And here I would like to answer Claudia Lemoneo. You wonder why you are concerned? If you really wonder, you can see this video that I made. But the Japanese tea ceremonies definitely deserve some discussion. I could not really find a description of uh, how much actual caffeine were consuming people uh, during these uh, ceremonies and how often would they do it. However, I found a lot of uh, description of how elaborate and absolutely unbelievably complicated the ritual is. Since I don't have any reliable data on uh, was their ceremonial drinking uh, addictive with excessive uh, caffeine consumption, I, I cannot compare it to the modern addictive uh, caffeine consumption. There is no question about it. Uh, to, to compare things when we don't have enough information. However, uh, what uh, most people will not notice in this comparison is the ritual. Most modern people are really programmed like robots by the mass media to dismiss the effects of the ritual as some sort of uh, fantasy and something that doesn't have tangible uh, effects on matter which is not what uh, even uh, scientific results show. All kinds of ritual elements like chanting, uh, meditation, all kinds of movements, change in the environment. These have been proven again and again to have a profound effect not only on the psyche but also on the physical body. So looking at the amount of ritual involved in the Japanese uh, tea ceremonies, I even doubt can the effect of the ritual itself be even compared to the impact of the caffeine. So to start with, uh, we don't know how much of the effect of the Japanese uh, tea ceremonies is because of the ritual and how much is because of the chemical compounds in the tea. So to compare that type of uh, tea drinking with uh, the modern caffeine addictions which uh, have shown millions of times their ugly face is uh, a really kind of uh, not well-grounded decision. So, hello dear Persida. No, I don't have that uh, narrow-minded definition of uh, what is seeing God all about. I definitely do not make the mistake uh, you think I'm making and the proof are probably tens of dozens of my videos where I try to hint how broad is my definition of God. I very often remind this uh, vast broadness of uh, the God definition I had to my listeners when I use the term God, how it is not possible to do in each and every instance, otherwise my videos will never end, all of them will be few hours long, nobody will watch until the end. I vote four times with all my four paws like for this comment because Bengal spice is also my favorite tea. It is caffeine free. Now, this is really a comment worth reading. Just a few short quotes from it which will hopefully make you read the full thing very carefully. Quote, so if you want advice from a person who has 20 plus years of daily experience of being on drugs, drugs overdose and the comparative effects between coffee, tea and soft drinks against 
class A drugs like crack, cocaine or amphetamine. His thoughts on caffeine addiction and its highly underrated and underreported effects on the mind and body end of quote is really worth reading. expressing a concern that uh, caffeine products like tea and coffee get sprayed with uh, poisons much more than other agricultural produce. Mm -hmm. 